this is a wolf head here in the woodland earth that's kind of given it like a 3d effect you could see with like the shading and everything it has almost like it sort of comes out at you um so the woodland art styles kind of um characteristics uh of woodland art are like the thick black um outlines um it has very bright and beautiful colors and lots of pattern work within those uh, thick outlines um so you can see uh these are all done similar style there's the wolf head uh, fox head and uh, there's the bear head there um, they kind of have an eeriness to them, but I um, really enjoy these. These are some of my favorite works. Um, so there's some more children's book work. Um, these are pretty old. So there's better ones here. Okay. Um, so Google Doodle. Um, sorry, just trying to get to the good ones. <laughs> uh, so yeah, these are all really fun. Um, like the colors are all really wild and lots of crazy things you can do um, just with the background and everything and all the pattern work within it. And it, it's, it, has, it doesn't have to be like very like um, uh, fine or detailed. It can be very like loose and like flowing and like uh, just like natural sort of um, drawing style I sort of use with it. Um, so yeah, it doesn't have to be like the cleanest. You don't have to be, um, the most skillful artist to sort of draw in the woodland art style there's there's so much you can do with it so many different ways you could draw uh, with it and um it's it's it doesn't have to be like exact it doesn't have to be like realistic um like um uh, like a portrait drawing um so uh it's it's more it's more from what comes from uh, inside you and um what kind of imagination you have so today, um, all right, let's see if I could uh, find the wolf uh, we're going to draw today and just share that with you quickly and then we'll get right into it. Um, it is right here. So Mangan, the wolf, um, this is a little step-by-step uh, -step process. It's a little... Um, watered down there's there's a few more steps to it but we'll basically start out just by drawing the outline and then uh, thicken up the lines with the uh, emphasizing lines here in step two and then color over it in the black marker and then we'll fill it in with um, different uh, shapes and patterns with different colors so the fourth step right there you can see um, it's a big wolf so um, I will just share my document camera and we could get started with drawing this wolf here. Um, yeah, let's, geez, I guess there's a way I could uh, keep this up here, but I don't think there is. Um, so we will just get started. Uh, all right. Hope everyone can see all right. I think there's a brightness here. So, um, yeah, we'll be drawing that image I just showed you of the wolf. And usually what I do is just start out with a very recognizable shape. And with the wolf, um, the most recognizable shape in his body is the head. And then we'll just work our way from there. So he's got a... Um, a bit of a, I guess, say a, we'll just break it down into the different shapes. So, um, let's see. I'm just going to zoom in here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but okay. Um, yeah, so we'll start off with the head. He's got a bit of a... Um, sort of square or rectangle all right, I'll, I'll draw a little bit darker 
But at this step, you should try to be drawing as light as, as, light as you possibly can, just because we're going to be erasing a lot of lines. Um, I'll draw a little bit darker so you guys can see. Um, yeah, looks like you can see that. So um, let's go through my uh, drawing here. He's got like a bit of a sort of square shaped head with a triangle snow attached to the bottom of, of his head here. So we'll just go in and draw these two sort of shapes together. And we'll just be erasing this line later on. Um, and then just sort of rounding out uh, the sides here. And then yeah, just erase sort of whatever lines um, we don't really need. Um, yeah, and then just this one right in between here. So this is the reason why you should be drawing as light as possible at this stage is because if you draw drawing too hard, you'll have these sort of lines here that you can't really erase. Um, and then those will just show up in your final drawing, which you don't really want. And then he just has um, two triangle ears at the top of his head as well. And then we can just add those in and then erase these lines here. So, um, I feel like my head's a little too long. Um, I might try to shorten it and just erase that. Just, um, just going to try to get this shape as perfect as possible because we're going to base the rest of the drawing, um, the rest of the dimensions off this, the, the wolf's head here. So just want to get it looking pretty decent. Um, just like that. Sorry. Something like that. Okay. So yeah, and then just go around and clean it up. And just fill in the line work. Let's go over it a little bit darker once you uh, have it looking the way you look. It. And yeah, so there's the basic shape of the head. His nose will be going down here, just at the bottom of his snout. And then he's got a couple of eyeballs. I have him with his eyes closed. Because he's uh, sort of tired, I guess. Put his eyes a little bit low right there. It has Hello. been a week. It is Friday. So. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm going to try not to erase too much because I can't really erase this pencil when I'm drawing too dark. Uh, so, yeah, from the head, we will work our way over to uh, the body and um, starts, I guess, from in the middle of his ear here. And then we'll just draw a line sort of straight up. And then once we get to, I guess, the top of this ear, we'll just sort of curve to the right a bit. And sort of come this way, something like this, I'd say, and then just sort of curve around and come back around. So I just want to get the shape of the torso drawn in, and then we'll draw in the, the legs and then the tail. So um, I'm just going to get that shape the way, looking the way I want it. So. Got a big bit of a peanut shaped body um, with a sort of bigger torso and then um, and the back half of his body sort of shrinks a bit. Um, so yeah, it kind of looks like that. Sort of, he's got a bit of a humpback. His head's uh, sort of hanging down a bit. And everybody feeling with time. Do you guys want a little bit of time to catch up or are you staying on track? Do you want Josh to go slower or faster? Okay, Josh, are you able to move your page up just a little bit? Some people who are on iPads are having trouble seeing um if you slide it up uh your desk a little oh, bit. Yeah. yeah, that's better. Is that better? Awesome. Cool. All right. Um, 
Yeah, I'll just share this quickly just again just to see where we're at. Um, so we got the head shaped in and then we're just sort of drawing the shape of the torso here. And then afterwards we'll just draw in the front legs and then the back legs and the tail. And then we'll break it down into the smaller compartments. He has sort of, uh, his body's broken down into smaller shapes. So let's go back to that. Um, so we got the shape of the body here. Uh, we can draw in his um, back leg. And it's sort of an oval shape. Um, sort of. Yeah, it's kind of like yeah, a big oval like this. That's the top of his leg, and then the bottom sort of comes down and uh, sort of curves around. He's got some pretty big paws, uh, just like that. So that's his paw here, and then his ankle. And his ankle comes and bends around to big, uh, his big leg. So then, yeah, we'll just go in and, and draw and erase these lines in here once we have it all drawn in. And then just, just clean up the line work and then move on to the next leg. And then, yeah, that looks pretty good, I think. And let's move on to this leg uh, that sort of comes in behind. And. This one's sort of um, going up forward a bit, so there's not a little bit, there's not that really like big curve in it that the back ankle has. So it's sort of just a straight like that. And the students, do you want a little bit of time to catch up there? Yeah, you just need, Josh, if you can give them just a wee bit of time to catch up. But I also want to let them know that, in, and I'm just going to check with Josh. Josh shared his pattern with me and the whole process with me when we did this with a class. So, Josh, is it, it okay if I put it on the website? Yeah, for sure. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Um, I love it when everyone's drawings end up so different. It's so awesome, like how everybody kind of makes it their own. So yeah, you guys can, if you're just waiting for people to catch up, you can go ahead and just do what Josh is doing and like tidy up your lines. Yeah, I'll show um is that zoomed in too much. That's good. So his head looks a little too small and then that's okay. Got a small head today. All right, um, yeah, let's move on to the front leg. Um, this uh, starts around the middle of his head here. And so that comes up a bit and then just back down. So this, this front leg has a bit of a shape like that for the top half. And then the bottom comes down like this. Something like that. A little golf club. 
Tokabafit. There's one of them. So, it's not perfect. That's okay. Right, um, and then let's do the other one. Some sort of deal. Just like that. And just erase these lines from here. And you can just go and clean up lines draw them in a little bit darker a little bit nicer there we got a uh, pretty uh, good looking wolf got a bit of a small head um missing his neck a little bit but it's okay Uh, not all wolves are uh, look the same, you know. So, yeah, we got pretty much the whole wolf here. We're just missing his tail. So I'll just let everyone catch it a little, little bit. And then I'll show you how to draw on his tail afterwards. I'm just going to try it nice these lines a little bit better. Looks all right. Um, okay, so this tail sort of comes, starts around the back here with the leg starts, and just sort of. Comes down a bit, and then I have it uh, curving up around his back, and just like like that, a little bit wavy, kind of wavy line here. So that's one and a half of it. And then we'll start the other line. It gets a little thicker in the middle, and then smaller again. Something like that. So wavy tail. Looks like a piece of grass just blown in the wind. And we've got a request for uh, Tatiana wants to know if she can have just a bit more time, please, Josh. And that's probably a good place for the students to get caught up. Yeah, maybe, maybe we can do our little language lesson here. So do you know the Anishinaabe word for wolf? Yeah, um, it is uh, my Ingen. Let's spell it out here. Ma. Uh, There's a little apostrophe. Double I's. Ma ing. Ma ing. Okay. Oh, it's supposed to be you. But Ingen. Uh, Ingen, and awesome. And um, do you happen to know the Ojibwe word as well? Is it the same or Kerrigan? Can you uh, maybe ask about that? I know Kerrigan's here. This is the Ojibwe word. What were you asking me for? Oh, um, I thought, I thought uh, oh, the Anishinaabe word as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's the same. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, the Ojibwe are part of the Anishinaabe. So the Anishinaabe consists of um, the Ojibwe, the Potawatomi, and the Odawa. So they're sort of split into three different uh, nations, but they're still considered to be the same people. They, a lot of them speak the same language, just different dialects.
So yeah, I, I consider myself uh, Nishnabe and uh, Ojibwe. Mingan means wolf. Um, let's see. So um, yeah, he represents in the seven grandfather teachings. Uh, the wolf represents humility. Um, so humility just kind of uh, teaches us uh, lessons about pride. Um, it's good not to have pride or be too um, full of yourself mm -hmm. or build to have a like too big of an ego. So this is what um, humility teaches us is that we're sort of all equal um, and well deserve deserve to be sort of treated equally and respectfully. So yeah, um, we'll just go through the pronunciation probably, uh, that'd be good. So uh, for the vowels in here, um, it's got three different vowels. So the two I's are considered one vowel. Um, so the A is the sound, has like a, a sound. Uh, and then the two I's is, um, in so it's like uh yeah may it's like an e sound i guess like a long e ingen well, those are the two vowel sounds so ma ing gun so this would be yeah sounds like a sort of sounds like a u Anyways. all right let's uh get going so we got it pretty much all drawn in. Uh, we'll just break them down into the smaller shapes. So for this wolf, I have um, a line coming down here from his from his shoulders, or I guess his hunchback down to his shoulder, um, and then another one sort of separates his back from his stomach. And then I have his uh, tail broken down into three different uh, shapes as well. So I just sort of draw lines through there. Um, pretty much anywhere you want the tail would be fine. And yeah, there we go. I'll zoom in so you can see a little better. Um, so we got pretty much the whole wolf drawn in. Um, he's just missing his uh, his fur. So to draw his fur as I go, just so draw these little like wavy spikes along his back. Something like that. So these little like shapes represent uh, just the fur on his back. And then I just sort of draw them all along his back. Kind of look like little waves. And I got um, yeah, fur along his back, maybe some of you too. And then I'm um, just drawing his tail as well, and uh, a little bit longer on the on his tail. His uh, tail's a little bit uh, fluffier than the rest of his body. Just uh, go all the way around his body and draw them all in. I sort of feel like it. Just something like that. I usually just. Uh, Stick to the back and the tail, and then just add a few um, uh, 
to like the black back of his heels as well. Something like that. And uh, he's got some like on his cheeks. Like that. And we could also add in his claws as well. From the woodland art, um, their claws are a little bit exaggerated. Um, they're kind of like forks in a way. Just long little spikes coming out uh, each paw. Like that. Uh, I might have drawn his feet a little bit too big and his head a little bit too small. <laughs> so it's really, he's a little bit disproportioned today, but that's completely okay. It's just a big fluid wolf with a small head. It almost looks like a squirrel with big feet. Buddy, good? Ever now, Tatiana, do you still need more time or are you, you good? Right. Yeah, just a couple more minutes. Um, yeah. I think it looks great, Josh. Just saying. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll share the screen again so you guys can see what it should look like. Something like that. That's so great to have the steps laid out right in front of you there too, Josh. So we'll make, I'll make sure I get that up on the website as soon as I can. Okay. And Gabriella has a really good suggestion. Wow. If you need more time, you can watch the recording as soon as it's up. Great strategy, Gabriella. <laughs> Guys, know what we're going to say before we do. Okay, um, I'll just explain uh, the next step and what we're going to be doing. Um, just going to find my sharpener here. So this is uh, the end of step two. I think, yeah, here one or two. Um, so we're just going to be thickening up the um, these black lines here. So when we cover over them in marker, uh, they'll have a line weight. That's uh, characteristic of the woodland style. So what I like to do is just draw a line, a second line within that one we already have drawn. And then just sort of go around each shape to just thicken up that line weight. And this will just make it easier. So um, when we move on to the next step uh, with the Sharpie, um, it's easier to just color that in because we'll just be using the Sharpie to fill in between those two lines there. So 
Yeah, I'll go around uh, every single shape and sort of just draw in the extra extra line to that line weight. Um, and if it already has one on one side of it, you don't have to do it on the other side. So try to go slower. Take my time with this. And it's good to have some variance in it as well. It doesn't all have to be the same uh, width. Um, just add some character to the illustration when it's um, all different variant um, line weight. And also, um, yeah, I like to sort of curve the corners. Just notice how, like, every um, sort of uh, corner or pocket sort of has, like, um, this rounded uh, roundness to it. Um, so, yeah, I like to add that in as well. Um, yeah, uh, this drawing's a little bit messy, but that's totally fine. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'll be drawing over this with marker. Um, yeah, erase what you don't what you don't like. That's why we use pencil at first, so we can erase it. And then draw it how we like it. But it's, um, yeah, it's always good not to um, try to be a perfectionist. Um, this is something I had a lot of difficulty with when I was, like, uh, learning how to draw. It was just, like, being um, just overly critical of my work. And, um, it's kind of hard to get like out of that mindset, um, especially if you want to be a professional artist. Um, but it's it's actually if if you can just like practice, um, sort of like just letting it be and not um, yeah getting upset if you draw something wrong, um, and just sort of understand that sometimes things take a while to sort of learn how to do. Um, and it takes practice, and you're not always going to get things um, perfect on the first try. Um, yeah, and if you just uh, be patient with it and just accept things uh, for how they are, uh, it's really um, eases your mind a lot. It makes um, it, you'll notice it in your day-to-day -day life too if you sort of like practices with uh, just different. Um, I guess, uh, sort of, uh, I guess, yeah, just sort of different skills. If you sort of just practice um, being mindful and not being overly critical of your work, um, you'll notice um, in um, other areas of your life, it affects that as well in a positive way. Uh, so, um, yeah, things take practice. Um, it takes me, or it took me a long time to get to where I'm at right now with my career. And um, you sort of just take each drawing uh, one at a time. And 
if it doesn't turn out the way you want it to, you can always um, sort of pick something that you may have learned from it and um, sort of be thankful for that and be happy with that. And then um, that's why I try that's to do it. I know the kids are busy typing, but the kind of things that they like to know, um, how much do you, how much time do you practice every day? Um, it really depends. Um, so right now I sort of uh, do a daily drawing in the morning to get myself warmed up. And uh, that usually takes me an hour to two hours. And then uh, I start my day sort of like my uh, children's book illustrations after that. And I try to work um, yeah, six to eight hours on that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much a full eight hour day, eight to 10 hour day usually um, with breaks in between, um, of course, so. Josh, how do you go about getting a contract to do a children's book illustration? Like, how does that even happen for an artist? Um, I guess there's um, different ways you can do it. For me, um, I sort of, I was asked to do this uh, Google Doodle uh, last year. Um, so I guess that got me a lot of um, publicity since it was on Google for an entire day and millions of people go on Google. Um, so, um, yeah, there's an agent who saw me or saw the work and uh, they got in touch with me and sort of emailed me and asked for a call and they wanted to represent me and... Do you have a picture of that Google Doodle? Do you happen to have it handy? I'm just curious. Uh, yeah, it's... On here somewhere. Story. Oh. Um, yeah, right here. So this is the doodle. It was for um, a jingle dress dancer, a celebration of the jingle dress dance. Um, Beautiful. I feel like I saw that. It looks familiar to me. Yes, yeah, is on uh, Google. I think June or July fifteenth last year. It's beautiful. Yeah, so um, an agent saw me or saw this work, and they contacted me and asked to represent me. And um, so I had to send them some sample work uh, that they can send out to publishers to see uh, if they are interested in um me working with them and then if there was some if there was a publisher interested in me doing illustrations then i'd have to send them another sample of the like a page from the book and then um if they like that sample then they'll let you uh, do that and then you have to sign this contract and um yeah then you just go from there so there's like a few deadlines uh with the workout and yeah it's good because um sometimes they pay well sometimes they don't uh, but you know it's it's all really just fun for me so yeah really neat thanks for sharing yeah. you want to make your other screen your your um Web camera bigger there, Josh. I think it's for sure. Yep. Yeah. There he is. Got the heavy lines that we'll be coloring in with the marker. It's looking good.
I'm sure Josh would love to see what you guys have drawn, um, whether it's a wolf or feel free to share them with us on the website. Yeah, I'd love to see them. Now finished. Um, Reminder how to get them to us. Sure, I'll pop it up up here. Okay, guys, if you have a look at my screen, you can see the sharing here. All you have to do is go all the way down to the Connected North at Home website. To the bottom, you'll see our next week's lineup is already up. Um, put your name, your email, or your parents' email, and then make sure you have a copy of that uh, of your picture somewhere on your computer. Click there to find that document, find that image, attach it, send us a little message, and you're good to go. Mally and I get it pretty much right away. All right, I'm going to move on to step three. Um, I'll just explain it a bit. Uh, we're just uh, taking a black marker, put a sharper here, um, and then just drawing in between or over these lines we have. Just, uh, yeah, doing the best to stay within those two lines, all the way around. Yeah, just being more patient with this step because you can't really erase this marker. Um, I'm trying to just yeah get your lines as clean as possible. Um, so. Something like that. Let's go. Yeah, just go over the whole drawing again with the black marker. So, yeah, this is pretty much the same um, process I use for. Like every every uh, medium I use, um, like painting as well, I'll draw my sketch on the canvas, or I'll have like a sketch drawn out of what I want to paint on the canvas, and then sort of lightly sort of draw it out on the canvas, um, and then yeah, use a black uh, or just paintbrush with black uh, paint, and then just do these lines here, and then. Um, yeah, then I'll fill in the colors after after I'm done all the black. And it's kind of like a coloring book almost. And then after the colors all done, I'll do another layer of black just to clean up, clean up all the little details. Um, and same thing with a digital media. Um, if you've ever used uh, like a digital drawing program like uh, Photoshop or Illustrator, Procreate. Um, they have like uh, like layers, so you could switch which layer you're drawing on. Um, so it's kind of like having um, more than one sheet of paper, but like transparent transparent paper in a way. So you could draw like the pencil on one layer, and then on the layer over top of it, you could draw the uh, black outline, and uh, it won't affect the layer underneath it. So it's really easy easy to use and then you can just um yeah erase or like delete the layer um the pencil layer underneath once you're done with it um, so it's pretty much like uh, yeah drawing the pencil and then um the uh, 
black over top of it, but it's like having a piece of tracing paper in between. In the way. Just can you paint that way too? Like with as an artist, do you paint online as well, or do you usually just use like acrylics yourself at home? Um, sorry, what was that? Does the Procreate have a painting program too? Do you paint using Procreate, or is it just the drawing part? Um, yeah, you could paint in it. Um, they have like tons of different kinds of brushes. Uh, so they have ones that look like acrylic, uh, like paintbrush or oil paint, and then, um, yeah, like gouache and all that. But I usually uh, use the like the ones that are like markers, the fine tipped ones. Um, so I'm trying to like I've been trying to just do like sort of like painting, like ones that sort of look like paintings, just like on my free time for fun, but like I'm not that great at it yet. Gabriella says she's using Ibisa Paint X. Is that the, did I say that right, Gabriella? Kinda. <laughs> <laughs> I buy I Ibs Paint X. Ibis, Ibis Paint. Ibis Paint. Cool. I've never heard of that. It's an anime. It's an anime style program. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Like I just got my sort of like uh, iPad. Uh, tablet with the Apple Pencil, like um, just last month. So I just started using it. Um, yeah, it's made like a world of difference. Cause, um, I'd usually just, um, before that, I just sort of draw it out, like as we are doing now. And then I'd scan in, I'd scan in the, um, the black marker drawing um, to my computer and then sort of colored in with that. In Illustrator, they have like a different sort of system to fill in colors. It's, it uses these uh, Bezier curves, they're called. So it's like um, you're creating these points uh, of the shape. So let's say you want to like make a square. Um, you just like make four clicks. And these would be the Bezier points. And then it fill in, it would fill in the squares itself so you just have to click those four points um so and then you could like sort of curve them and make them round and stuff it's uh, pretty pretty cool hard to sort of learn how to do but once you get the hang of it they're pretty easy to use they're pretty fun to use Um, so yeah, I went to school for graph design. Um, the reason I did that is because there's, there's a lot you could do with graph design. Um, I kind of felt like I wanted to be an artist, but um, I also wanted to work with computers. And um, yeah, you can manipulate images. Uh, fairly easily with computer programs nowadays, and it really makes uh, the process a whole lot easier or a lot smoother. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, as well as like there's so many opportunities you could do with it. Um, like I've done work for bands, like made album covers, um, like CDs, design CDs and everything, like posters. Uh, designed t-shirts for bands, um, like designed logos for a bunch of different companies as well, uh, posters, just said posters, but 
yeah, just like illustrations for like news outlets and uh, yeah, like the Google Doodle you just saw. Um, so, and uh, yeah, like um, I guess we're at a point where uh, I guess indigenous cultures um, um, sort of re revitalizing. Um, so there's quite a bit of interest in it right now. Um, I get a, a lot of people, I personally, like I don't really have to go looking for work or it's sort of people will sort of just ask me. Um, so yeah, people come to me. Which uh, I know is not always the case um, for a lot of artists. So I guess I'm fairly lucky in that regard. And Josh, um, you work with in a studio that there are many artists that are working out of the same space, correct? Yeah. Do you ever collaborate with them to create something together? Um, let's see. I haven't. No, I haven't. Like we did have a group show. Um, last year like the start of last year yeah. um so we all came together and like i was part of the um the curating committee um and yeah we'd have meetings like every other week and um yeah i designed uh um like i did the uh, artist catalog for that show um and yeah we, like i worked with a couple other artists from um the program here on that little book, but we all had sort of separate pieces for the show. And yeah, um, that's pretty much it so far. Like I know there's like a lot of musicians here, um, so they get together a lot and do a lot of products together. Um, the visual artists don't really work together all that much. <laughs> Um, I don't know why that is. I think that's just uh, our nature as artists, or my nature, anyways. Like I always been just been one to work on my own. Um, but I do like working groups, work well in groups as well. Um, Yeah, there's, there's always opportunities out there. Um, like I've, I've applied for a few grants with a couple of groups of artists to try to um, get some, like just apply for these uh, like murals projects, um, but like uh, we've never gotten them so far. Well, some of the students need to go now, so that's okay, guys, if you need to go. We'll just keep Josh for another maybe five minutes, but I will be putting the, and I'll wait till tomorrow just um, because I need to get some things done here tonight, but I'll put the um, outlines and how Josh finished this on the website as well. There was a beaver and an eagle, right, as well that you sent me, Josh? Yeah. Yeah. Can I put those up as well? Yeah, for sure. Okay, awesome. So there'll be an eagle and a beaver as well. I think he's almost done the outline. Yeah. Kind of. Just clean up the lines too afterwards.
Um, yeah, there is um, dwarf or uh, outlined. Uh, you'll notice like um, like the details, not the best. Like in these areas here, I think it's pretty um, wide. Usually, I like to have them a lot thinner, like those lines. Um, I don't have any on me right now, but uh, yeah, when I'm working, I guess um, like a professional illustration, like I have different uh, weights of marker. So this is a pretty thick one, um, but for the details, I have like a really, really thin marker. It's kind of like, yeah, pretty much like a pencil or a, a mechanical pencil. It'll have um, like a point that's like that uh, thin. And that'll like really help with um, when you're doing the details and filling in those small parts and just getting um, like sharper points. Uh, so that's very helpful if um, you want to do stuff a little more professionally. There's um, different markers you get. Um, it's really, really useful. Um, yeah, and these Sharpies as well, they tend to bleed. Um, like the ones I get, they call through Micron, the brand. They're like $5 a marker, um, but they have really good ink. It's called India ink, um, and it won't bleed on the page, so you get really clean lines. It makes a huge difference. Nice. Well, Josh, it's uh, like we've gone a little past time, which is fine. We just want to respect your time and everybody else's time as well. But I just want to thank you for doing yet another.